Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about multimodality with image bind uh, from Meta AI. So let's get started. What is image bind after all? Image bind is uh, this model which sort of uh, aligns six modalities, their embeddings into a common space. Right? So the six modalities are images, text, audio, depth, thermal, and inertial measurement unit. I'm sure you've heard of many, many multimodal models, but this is like multimodal to an extreme. Sort of combines information from six different, uh, um, you know, different modalities and puts them into a single space. It sort of works by actually taking the unimodal, um, or, you know, data across two modes where image is the common mode. So you take data for image and text, image and depth, image and heat map, image and audio, image and IMU, the in inertial measurement unit, and uh, somehow is able to sort of uh, then work across all modalities together. Right? So, um, and, and the idea behind this kind of a model is that uh, image is sort of central to our senses. An image of a beach, for example, can remind us of the sound of waves, the texture of the sand, a breeze, or even inspire a poem, right? Uh, so that is why what they do is to take image pair data and, uh, the, you know, uh, as they show even in their experiments, the such image pair data is sufficient to actually bind all the modalities together. Uh, in fact, their image bind model uh, enables these three different kinds of capabilities now. Cross-modal retrieval. So yes, uh, uh, you know, retrieval using uh, text has been popular, but then if you essentially just uh, put up a uh, audio and you're actually retrieving by audio, you hear a crackle of a fire and then you want to retrieve other things. So based on the crackle of the fire, it's so awesome that you can now retrieve images and videos which, which have to deal with fire or even depth images which show furnace or something related to fire. Right? And of course, text, which basically has all the things related to fire. Similarly, with an audio of baby queen or essentially even text, basically saying typically search by text is good, search by audio is also great. But if you basically have this kind of a text, a baby is crying while a toddler is laughing, right? Uh, or if you essentially search by audio, baby queen sound, right? You can actually retrieve images, videos, uh, uh, you know, even depth images and, and text, uh, which relates to the same kind of uh, semantics, right? What you could also now do is to do uh, multimodal embedding space arithmetic. So, for example, you could actually take uh, an image of this uh, uh, of this bird and then you know put up uh, waves sound, and then you can actually see the same bird uh, in, with the background of uh, in, you know in, with the background of sea and lake and waves and so on. Right? You can also take uh, uh, you can also do uh, the audio to image generation now. You can take the audio of a dog barking and then actually generate an image which actually shows you dog barking. You can take an audio of rain, uh, uh, rain pitter patter, rain drops, right? And then you can actually see uh, nice uh, uh, rain images. Okay, so isn't that magic, right? How is this model trained? Well, the model is trained using uh, uh, bimodal data across several different modes where image is the common mode. So there is a web image text data which has been used to combine image and text, depth sensor data which combines is, combines images with depth images, uh, web videos data which combines images uh, with audio, thermal data which combines images with uh, thermal 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 part, right? Uh, and then egocentric videos which sort of combines images and videos together, uh, which combines videos and the IMU data together, right? Um, well, uh, the way they uh, train the model, uh, the, the original model is essentially a clip kind of a model. So for images, in fact, they use open clip model. For text encoding, they use, uh, uh, so sorry, for text, they basically use the open clip model. For images, they use the VIT model, VIT H 630 million parameter model. So uh, now uh, the model has been trained using uh, two modal bimodal data where one of the modes is image only. So for uh, so consider I as that II as basically the ith image instance and MI basically as the ith instance uh, with some modality MI. And then you have uh, uh, this QI and KI which are queries and keys coming from uh, some deep learning networks which have been used to come up with an embedding for those images or those multimodal uh, or those uh, or that uh, uh, another modality information. And uh, what you want to then do is to basically take those representations and minimize the info NC loss. There's a contrastive uh, uh, framework uh, where the idea is that you have, let's say, an image and you have lots of audios and uh, you consider the paired audio, uh, the real paired audio as the positive pair image and the positive audio, and you consider several negative audios. And then the idea is to be able to ensure that the positive audio uh, essentially turns up uh, at the as the highest probable, while the all the other negative audios basically get a very low uh, probability. Right? And you do that in both the ways. 
So you just don't do image to video uh, rather, rather than considering just the negative videos and the positive video paired with the real image. You also do the other way around. So given an audio, you come up with the, uh, you try to pair it with the positive image uh, by ignoring the other negative images. So that's basically the symmetric influency loss that they experiment with. Uh, they, they use the following data sets. Of course, besides using the image text pairs from the large scale web data, they actually use audio set data, which is video audio pairs, uh, sun RGB D data, which is image depth pairs, LLVIP data, which is image thermal pairs, and uh, ego 4 d data, which is video IMU pairs. Right. Um, so uh, across modalities, they more or less use the uh, VIT kind of models for encoding. So uh, let's look at them one by one. So uh, they use the same encoder for images and videos. In fact, they treat videos as two frame images. So they extract two frames and then that is what is the representation for their video. Uh, so for now, the video representation seems to be a little, um, a little bit on the lighter side, right? Uh, for audios, they basically convert a two second audio sample at 16 uh, kilohertz into spectrograms and spectrograms are essentially uh, you know, images themselves and therefore they use VIT on top of those spectrogram images um, so as to encode uh, spectrograms. Thermal and depth images are actually uh, uh, are actually you know, modeled as one channel images. So you convert the depth image into disparity maps for scale invariance and uh, uh, and then you know you use uh, VITB model for thermal images and VITS model to encode the depth images. For IMU signal, well, they are sensor signals, so you extract IMU signal uh, consisting of accelerometer and gyro gyroscope measurements uh, along uh, X, Y, and Z directions. Um, uh, you take uh, 2,000 time step information readings, right, and project them onto uh, project them using one-dimensional convolutional layer with a kernel size of eight. So that basically, and and then when the, when you get this time series sequence, you essentially encode it using transformer. So all of these modalities finally come up with three-dimensional representations or whatever dimensional representations, but they are mapped back to three-dimensional by adding a linear projection head at the top. All of them may be using this VIT architecture, you know, but then they essentially have different encoders, different encoders. Okay, so how does image bind perform on zero-shot classification? So, um, so you have an image bind model, great. Uh, let's try to do a zero-shot classification, right? And they did uh, uh, two kinds of experiments, classification and retrieval experiments. So, and in fact, within classification also, they did several kinds of experiments dealing with audio classification or scene classification or person classification or scenario classification. Right? So as you see, across these data sets, the tasks differ. You also see that the number of classes differ. So there could be like as high as uh, you know 527 classes and as low as just two classes in person classification data set. The metric, of course, differs depending on whether it is a, a classification task or a retrieval task, and the number of examples differ across these data sets. So, what do you observe across these data sets? So, these data sets are mostly shown in the uh, in the you know in the light purplish color here. So, as you observe uh, here, the comparison is done across several other things. Of course, image point is right there, but then you also have random accuracy. So, on uh, the data sets which have thousand classes, random accuracy is of course 0.1 percent, right? Uh, you all, uh, they also compare with text paired uh, baselines. So text paired baselines are baselines which uh, where you know the training was actually done. So these are not zero shot. There, there was training which was done using paired text data for that particular modality. And they're also comparing with absolute state of the art methods, which of course have a huge amounts of supervised learning being done, um, ensemble learning, ensemble based methods being applied, and so on and so forth. Many many uh, sources, right? So it's sort of bad to compare with uh, absolute state of the art because well they are supervised, and second they have many many interesting sources in picture, right? So, but it is good to compare image point with uh, text paired models. Um, and uh, also it is good to know that across all of these modalities, now, you know, image point is a single model. It sort of works across all of these modalities. And uh, what is interesting to note is that it comes up with accuracy values. Uh, it comes up with these with these accuracy values 54 and, you know, for Sunday data set 35 and so on, which are uh, uh, many times very, very comparable with the uh, with the state of the art absolute state of the art accuracies and uh, most of the times you know they are better than the than the results obtained by specialist text paired models right specialist text paired models uh, so here in this table there is also results being shown for uh, standard uh, image classification tasks and video classification tasks so this is imagenet uh, data set this is places data set places 365 data set this is kinetics uh, uh, 400 video data set and this is msr vtt uh, data set right uh, so these results uh, that you see, uh, uh, these results were actually obtained using image point using text prompts. Now, uh, this is audio retrieval. So how do you retrieve audio? Well, you have to basically put up some prompt. So the prompt here that was put up was on text, of course. Yeah. So that's that. Now, for some of the data sets, there are more results here. So essentially, you see here, um, um, you know, results for audio uh, specific uh, um, or uh, you, you see results here for audio retrieval. 
uh, recall at one, recall at 10 across these three different data sets. And what you observe is that the image point really gives you the best results without using any audio specific supervision. Note that this is zero shot, right? This is absolutely zero shot. And even with zero shot stuff, uh, it gives really good results uh, uh, for, for audio retrieval. Uh, for audio classification as well, its results are very comparable to uh, audio clip, uh, which is basically a supervised method. Now, lastly, on MSR VTT dataset, again, you observe that uh, image point actually gives you, uh, I mean, especially uh, with audio and video modality, it gives you state of the art results, but even with just the audio, it gives you reasonably good results, reasonably good results. Okay, so uh, this is okay, but then what are the new applications that image point uh, enables now? Okay. So the interesting part is now you can do very, very fancy things. For example, you can take this image, uh, image of a basket of fruits, and then you can actually uh, put up, uh, uh, combine it with the image bind representation for the chirping birds audio. And then it can actually generate images, uh, which essentially look like these, you know, birds uh, with fruits or trees and so on. Yeah. So essentially you can do multimodal embedding space arithmetic. So again, you don't need to retrain your clip model. You can actually uh, just upgrade your existing clip model or DALI model for that matter, uh, which use uh, clip embeddings to make use of image bind embeddings from other modalities such as audio. So you just take uh, image bind embeddings for the image, embed, image, image bind embeddings for the, for the audio and use it to condition the image generation process and therefore generate really awesome uh, images which combine the semantics of the two. You can also, here's another example, you can take a clock and then you can take church bells and then it gives you images about, uh, about uh, you know, these, these uh, clocks on, on top of a church. Right. Yet another thing that you could do, well, um, uh, there is a model called as DETIC, which is essentially text-based detection, object detection model. So you could basically say, um, you know, a dog barking, and it will basically give you a nice uh, uh, a box around a dog, which is barking in the image, saying that, hey, this is object detection, but using text as the input. Now, you can replace uh, its uh, clip-based uh, uh, text embeddings, you know, clip-based text embeddings of the DETIC model with image binds audio embeddings. And now what you have is audio prompted object detection model. Okay, so, so you can basically put up an audio of dog barking and it actually nicely plots that rectangle around the dog. Or you can basically say sea waves and nicely plots a rectangle around the sea waves and so on. Or you can basically plot things like, uh, you know, or give in audio input as keyboard typing and then it nicely uh, plots a rectangle around the keyboard, right? So, um, and again, this does not really require any training. All you need to do is to replace the uh, clip embeddings or uh, uh, any other kind of embeddings that you have with the uh, image bind embeddings and uh, you, you have the functionality uh, of, of audio based uh, object detection or audio controlled image generation. Okay. So in summary, image bind uh, is a multimodal model that aligns six modalities embedding into a common space, images, text, audio, depth, thermal, and inertial measurement unit or sensors in short, right? On audio classification and retrieval benchmarks, image bind zero shot classification matches or outperform specialist models, which have been trained with direct paired data, audio text supervision on benchmarks like ESC, Clotho, and audio caps. Uh, image bind actually enables many interesting tasks like cross-modal retrieval, combining arithmetic, uh, co combining uh, combining multimodal embeddings via arithmetic, generating uh, uh, you know images with uh, audio input or detecting audio sources in images. Um, um, finally, image bind is a way to evaluate. I mean, it, it allows you uh, to evaluate pre-trained vision models for non-vision tasks and also upgrade your models like DETIC and CLIP uh, to actually you, uh, to, to, to be used using the audio, to be, to be prompted using the audio. Okay, hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or uh, look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.